Hello and welcome to another episode of our Scornavaco Instructor Tip of the Week. Today myself, Mr. Mike, and Mr. Clark are going to be taking you guys through an example of some ways to take their, your student's star block, make it a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more interesting, and uh, just add some different tips and flavor that can make your practice not only more exciting but more effective. So first we'll just take a look at our basic star block. Our star block is what we call a blocking set. It takes all of the different blocks our students learn and puts them back to back in kind of a seamless flow so you can work on all the different positions and moving from one position to another. Normally this is done from a training horse. So Clark will go ahead and step out to his training horse, brings his hands back to the chamber. What we're gonna do is just go through the basic blocks very quickly here, just so you guys have an idea of what we're working around. Most of you have probably seen this before. We're gonna start off with an upward block going up, up above his head an inward block coming across his body. Inward refers to any motion crossing his center line or the line from his nose all the way down to his toes. We do an outward block to the other side. This is called an extended outward because it reaches. And once again, it's outward because it's moving away from that center line. We circle down to a downward block, bring the hand back to a back elbow or the chamber position and finish with our push down. So very briefly, the positions are up, in, out, down, back, and push. And those are the, the blocks we're going to be working around with today. We're going to change those, modify them, and make them a little bit more intricate. So now that you have a basic idea of the blocking set, or what we call our star block, which is normally done from the horse stance, what we're going to do is now do this from a neutral bow. So Clark's going to go ahead and step back to a right neutral bow. This is what we call our self-defense stance. The reason we're going to start practicing from here is it adds a couple of different levels of complexity, both on changing the reach with the back arm it also changes the position of how much he has to block. If I have you go ahead and step back to a uh, training horse one more time, if you can see here, he's a very wide target and he's going against one of our biggest rules, which is don't keep your center line open, which is that line from nose all the way down the center of the body we talked about before. When he steps back to his neutral bow, that target becomes a lot smaller and the center line becomes off-centered. So two ba major things happen here. He doesn't have to block as far with his range. His inward block only has to cover from his shoulder to here and his outward block only comes to the outside of the shoulder there instead of all the way across his torso on the width. The other thing that happens is if we're using this backhand, he has to turn his shoulder to make sure he can reach all the way in front of him. If he's just standing in a neutral bow and holds both hands out, you can see that one hand is not quite as far as the other. And if you want to turn and face this way real quick, you can see his backhand is not quite as far. If we turn the shoulder forward, they have the same reach, which is one thing we're going to be practicing here. So first, we'll do this with the front hand. So he's just going to, from here, if you watch closely, you'll notice this is a much narrower range he has to defend, starting with the upward block to the inward, outward, downward, back elbow, and push down. All, change, all now basically blocking on that same idea, but a lot narrower. Now when he uses his back hand, every time that block comes out, his back shoulder is going to come forward so he can reach the same distance as his front arm, the idea being that he can stop all the attacks farther away from him versus letting them get much closer before he has to block. And then we'll go ahead and just finish from here. So we'll do this upward, inward, outward, downward, back elbow, and push down. And that's star block from a neutral bow. So now that we've added the different elements of the narrower target and the depth of the back arm, one thing we can add to make this a little more interesting, a little more dynamic and challenging, is we can execute this from a one-leg stance. What we end up getting there is he is then practicing his balance as well as going through his basic hand coordination motion. So what he's going to do is just go ahead and bring his leg up to a one leg stance and just execute the star block from there, going in, out, down, back elbow, and push down. And if you would like to, you can keep your student doing this. You can challenge them to do as many repetitions the entire way through as they can. They can do it forwards, and then they can do it backwards. Uh, however you would like to change it up, but the nice thing about adding these different layers and elements is it allows you to practice without feeling fatigued and too repetitious. Now that we've established the idea of the back shoulder turning forward when you're using it to get the same reach as the front hand, what we're going to do is work on alternating hands with each block. What that means is we're going to do the entire pattern, but each hand will do the block before we move on to the next one. So to slowly take you through this, we'll start off with the front hand doing an upward block. He's then going to turn his shoulder for the reach and do an upward block with his back hand. We'll move to the inward block with the front hand, and then the inward block with the back hand, and so on, continue through the pattern. So what you end up getting there is a couple of different things. For one, both hands become active. 
So as you can see, if we're doing this, just we'll just do the upwards here. If he does the upwards here, what you'll notice is this hand is going to then retract as the other hand comes out. And it's very important that when we practice this, this hand comes all the way back to the chamber, because part of what this hand is doing is not only practicing things such as pulls and grabs and getting into a ready position for the next piece, this hand actively firing back actually increases the power of this arm. Similar to as if you were holding a staff in front of your hand, you could get this end to come toward you by pushing with one hand or pulling with the other hand. If you do both at the same time, you have two forces accelerating that end of the weapon, or in his case, accelerating that arm. So what we're looking for is not only a strong block firing here, but this hand pulling back to the chamber very quickly. So if you would like to just drop back to the starting and just go one, once through with some power. The final layer we can add to your star block is taking this from an entirely defensive blocking set to more of a dynamic counter punching set. So what we'll do is we'll have the front hand is always going to be the defending hand. Generally speaking, that's the rule we abide by. And the back hand, because it has all of the power, is going to be the counterattacking hand. The one thing we're going to add here is from a neutral bow, which is where your toes point towards the corner, evenly spaced, and your knees are bent nice and low. We're going to then, as we counterpunch, turn to what we call a forward bow. So his back hip, toes, shoulder, everything along the back side of his body is going to turn at the same time he throws a punch or whatever strike it might be to get all of his power lined up right behind that strike so it's not just the arm working but everything is working so that the strike is coming directly from the whole body's power and all that torque. So what we'll be doing here is we're going to go through the pattern of the blocks with the right hand or the front hand and every time the block finishes the back hand or the left hand in this case is going to throw the counter punch. So to start off we'll be doing an upward block with the front hand bringing this hand back to the chamber nice and quick and pivoting to a forward bow giving the, the counter punch here. Then we'll do the same thing coming across to the inward and counter punch, then out to the outward and punch, downward. The nice thing here is there's normally a back elbow block in this form. If you look at that, if we do that piece one more time, the downward block, as that hand pulls back to the chamber, it is doing that same exact position for your back elbow block. So part of that you notice with just rechambering the hand, there's hidden motions, whether it's a strike or a block. And then the last one we have is our push down and then the counter punch. So we'll go ahead and let Mr. Clark do this one more time with full speed and power just so you guys can see it. As students become more advanced, we can do this with moving around the room, having attackers and defenders, things like that. But for now, this is a really good starting place for you guys to have a little bit more dynamic practice at home. Thank you for joining us today, this week, and we hope you guys enjoyed.